Davis and this is Taskmaster. Back when I was posing for this trophy, I started thinking about our contestants, thinking about the enormous pressure they're under here and how you can see the lines getting deeper and deeper on their already exhausted faces. That was a good day. So, let's get on with it and meet the five people battling out to make you happy. They are Alice Levine, <laughs> Asim Chowdhury, Lisa Tarbuck, Russell Howard, And look what's just plonked itself on the little seat next to me. It's... Little Alex Hall! <laughs> got to get on with the show, but let's banter. OK, I've got a confession to make. Oh! Hmm? I did something to you uh, when you were asleep last night. With you. <laughs> for, I did something for you. For and with? Yes, it involved my two favourite things, your face and rubbing. Ready? Mm. I did a little <laughs> brass rubbing of your face. Oh. <laughs> do you like it? I do like it. How does it make you feel? It's really nice. It makes me feel that that's exactly how I sleep, with my eyes wide open. <laughs> <laughs> so, should we get on with the show? <laughs> of course. So, uh, we're going to start with a prize task. The theme for this show is... Who could bring in the most interesting footwear? Ask him. Right, you might be into this. Basically, uh, I was out in LA, not to name drop or anything, but me and the Corrupt FM boys, we know a couple of famous rappers out there. Yeah? There's a guy called Post Malone, and he's got a room full of shoes that he never, ever wears. <laughs> so I picked up, like, three pairs of trainers, but... Three? Yeah. It's bad enough being greedy at a buffer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there were these cowboy boots that I saw. And wow. I thought, trainer on one foot, cowboy, you know, smart casual. He has worn these things in public before. We've got I a video have, yeah, of him wearing times. them. Here it is. Smart casual. I was about to say, this is the first prize task that you've done that isn't a picture of you, and the camera pans <laughs> up, and you've got a picture of you on your own <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Alice. So, I've gone for something that's gone out of fashion, but I think it's going to make a comeback. It's the Veruca sock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They are the exact same Pantone shade as my skin, so they're actually my pair. I mean, they're absolutely repellent. Aren't they? <laughs> yeah. They're, they're not flying off the shelves as they used to, which I find interesting. Well, that's because the Veruca actually became extinct in 1985. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Who's next? <laughs> Do you want to look at uh, Tim's interesting footwear? Tim, this keeps one part of your foot warm. Oh. It's a big toe bobble hat. Hmm. <laughs> I'll wager you knitted that yourself. It was my mother. <laughs> is that your foot, Tim? That is my foot, is it? That's a nice foot. I would say second right? toenail from the end, little long, but apart yes. from that, I'm really enjoying it. And how shy is your little toe? Yeah, look <laughs> <laughs> He lets the big toe do the glamour work. <laughs> I really like Big Toe, and I really like saying Big Toe Bobble Hat. Yeah, me too. Big, yeah. big Toe Bobble Hat. It'd be a good exclamation. Instead of, sort of saying, fucking hell, you're like, Big Toe Bobble Hat. <laughs> why don't we fight the urge to swear in this show? And, and Every time we want to swear. Why doesn't everyone not swear, but I will swear? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to hear you drop the C-bomb while I was Big Toe Bobble Hat. Crikey. <laughs> 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 Lovely. <laughs> Lisa. Uh, the whole idea of putting shoes on dogs. Come on. You're <laughs> going to be feeling things with your feet if you're a dog. Or certainly trying to. Not with four silicon things shoved on them. <laughs> four silicon pet dog boots from Lisa. There they are. <laughs> imagine, wow. imagine if you will, and I was imagining, a champagne-coloured chihuahua in them. Yeah, yeah. Tippity-tapping round like a bloody water boatman. <laughs> Oh, 
recall the analogy. <laughs> well, you know Jesus what I mean. Christ, I think I've, I've heard Water Boatman since a 1981 science lesson. <laughs> What's happened? We've gone back in a time machine. Yeah. To the land of Verrucas and water boats. <laughs> Those are the good old days. <laughs> They're a cracking pair of shoes. Have we got, can we see a dog in them? Or... Um, well, I've got a little hey! bit. <laughs> They're ridiculous shoes. Well done. Russell, what's your interesting footwear? Um, I, last year, I was at uh, the Liverpool Football Club Awards ceremony, and there was an auction where you could buy the footballers' boots. And the footballer I liked the most was a man called Philip Coutinho, who's since left Liverpool. Big Coutinho fans in. Well, <laughs> here are the boots. That's the real, that is the ah. real deal. So did they just send you one? They just sent me one, yeah. It doesn't look like he plays for Liverpool, it looks like he plays for Authentic City. <laughs> Okay, I am putting Alice's Veruca sock in last place. What? Is that your final decision? I find Veruca slightly um, less interesting than football. I'm putting Russell's football boots here, uh, for two points. <laughs> One to Alice, two to Russell. I like humiliating dogs, and so uh, um, three points to Lisa. Okay. Oh, now it's wow. getting exciting, isn't it? Between us and Between Tim. Between someone who actually met a rapper. Uh, what sort of person would put Big Toe Bobble Hat? You know what, I think Post Malone would love Big Toe Bobble Hat. So I'd say give it to Tim. Oh, oh this is some... Very oh. clever oh. psychology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should... <laughs> you see, a, a weak man would be influenced by your generosity and think, nah, I should give it to you now, when I was going to give it to Big Toe Bobble Hat. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> Big Toe Bobble Hat has been pushed into second place <laughs> by your generosity. One cowboy boot, one trainer, he takes it. That's how easy this game is. <laughs> All right, little man, what task have we got lined up first? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a surprise! Oh! oh. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Here we go. Hi, Alex. Oh, hello, Lisa. Hey, girl. Hello. Hello, Russell. How's it going? I'm feeling very happy today. Oh, look at that! Oh, look at that egg! <laughs> <laughs> I've just had a coffee. <laughs> Can I just uh, crack into this? Oh, it's so tiny. Put something genuinely surprising inside this chocolate egg. <laughs> you have one hour after which Alex will open your chocolate egg. Your time starts now. Now then, I, it's normally there's something to read. Well, I said, well, I'm going to actually go away. OK. Because obviously I've got to be surprised by it. Yes, of course. See you in an hour, mate. I thought I could put a spider in it. But I really hate spiders, so I'm like, how am I going to catch a spider and then put a spider in it without touching a spider or looking at a spider? So I'm just going to go in the garden and see whether or not I can, using this system, um, catch a bee. Taskmaster. If I do this, it'd be television history. <laughs> please, God, please, please, please. When you want to try and find a bee, what's the first thing you do? Climb a tree. Climb a tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should we start with Alice Levine's attempt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. This egg contains the key to your fortune. Wasn't expecting that. Mm, there he is. I wasn't expecting this to be in it. So, so far, so surprised. 
It says my personal identification number is <laughs> Which is correct. <laughs> it's also the code for my phone. And when you um, go into my house, my burglar alarm. Are you surprised? I'm quite surprised. <laughs> it was unsettling, Alice. Well, I think that's a bonus emotion, but I think surprise was the premier one. I was quite surprised I said it out loud as well. After. <laughs> I was really surprised you said it out loud. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Two things for those of you who are confused by the beeps. Alex's personal identification number is 3047. Beep. Beep. <laughs> Um, There's very little left now. Well, how surprised were you? Well, I was surprised that you'd found out the number. I was surprised that my wife apparently had given her the number. <laughs> I was surprised by the amount of money that's come out of my account since <laughs> then. <laughs> so, yeah, I was overall surprised. Hello, AutoQ. We have to take a short break now. See you after that. Little old part two time. Um, remind us of what was happening in part one, please, Alex. Of course. So the ladies and men have been trying to put something genuinely surprising into a chocolate egg. So far, I've been the victim of fraud, thanks to Alice Levine. <laughs> but we haven't seen Asim and Tim, have we? No. no. Well, Asim and Tim. Here we go. Alex, your egg's ready, mate. Come on, Tim. Hello. <laughs> well, open up and I hope you're surprised. Your hands are dirty. Yeah, it's not been without uh, problems, this. <laughs> I'm going to open the egg. Go for it. Any advice? Just be gentle with it, that's what I'd say. Open it up gently. OK. <laughs> There's a little worm in there. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> that's quite surprising. Yeah, love a good worm. But I really wanted to find a ladybird for you, mate. Oh, that would have been a nice one. I know. And imagine it would have just fluttered up. And... Mm, no, but the worm just sat there. <laughs> You're surprised. It was surprising. And what was his name? Philip. <laughs> well done, Philip. That was a good job. <laughs> OK, Asim. You were aiming for a ladybird. Yeah. In the order of enchanting creatures, <laughs> I always go butterfly, mm. ladybird, worm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I did there was a shit version <laughs> of what Tim... Tim did the real thing, and he got a bee, which is amazing. No, I did was fly. Fly. <laughs> fly. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, were you surprised by the worm? This is up to you, really. I was intrigued by the worm. Intrigued, not surprised. <laughs> Philip the fly. He came out and he turned to look at Alex. <laughs> <laughs> he, he turned. He, he, did, did, he, did. he, did. he, he did. climbed turn out and he turned Alex. like that. <laughs> he looked at Alex and went, surprise! And it, was, <laughs> and it was almost as though I'd gone and beat <laughs> and go. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. The most enchanting thing for me was just how pleased you were <laughs> at the way that you and Philip had worked together. And I think we've actually got a clip of Yeah, that. the moment just when Philip came out. This is Tim's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Giggly and girly, I love it. How surprised were <laughs> you? That's the question. <gasps> oh! I was surprised. Big but brief. Good. <laughs> Who's next? Next, it's Russ Loward. <laughs> Russ Loward. Hello. Hi, Russell. There it is. That's the egg. I think this is going to evolve our friendship. Friendship? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Start. Yes. <laughs> Start. Here I go. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. hmm? Yeah. OK, that's a little surprise. Uh-huh. A trip for two to watch Liverpool, a week's holiday in a Spanish villa, the book How Green Were the Nazis. Yep. That is, I wasn't expecting that. Nope. And a single grain of rice signed. Yeah, signed. By... Chris Rock. There is. What? That's the rice. Yeah but, yeah, but where's the signature? Just there, see? So how do I get the others? Chris how do I get Rock? The a trip for two to watch Liverpool is being sorted, so that'll be the tickers will be with you. 
Me and... You, whoever you want to take. You? Uh, yeah, I'll go with you. You don't have to. And the, uh, the week's holiday, basically my mum and dad have got a, a villa in Spain. It's uh, only in July. That's the only caveat. The holiday? Yeah. Okay. It's the only time it's here. I don't know about how surprised you were, but I'm surprised that Russell put a pro-Nazi book in the order. <laughs> it's a surprising book. It doesn't Does it? mean that I'm pro-Nazi. I mean, I've got the look, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and you and me went to uh, a football game. Yes, yeah, so I did go to a And it was really match. exciting because it isn't about Alex, it's about his son, who had a surprising, wonderful day. Now, my son loved the game, but he found the book confusing, so it's really... <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can see how surprised I was to be at Anfield with Russell Howard and my son wearing this outfit. This is what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Lots of lovely surprises. And are you going to go to Spain? You've got to go, otherwise it's rude. I've got to go, otherwise it's rude. Right. Yeah. OK. Lisa's one. Lisa's big egg surprise. <laughs> Alex, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah, really ready. Hi. Mm. What do you want me to do? Well, I want you to be surprised by it. <laughs> Looks like a bomb. Sure, it might be. Surprising, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. OK. I wasn't that. expecting it. I wasn't expecting that at all. How do you feel about that? I haven't got a garage. Didn't you? I did, but I converted it into the spare room for my wife's parents. I mean, we do still call it the garage. That's where he is. How long have you been there? I don't know. He's a dangerous man. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. Which bit? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the recording, the content of the recording, and then the story to back up the recording that Jeremy Irons, Jeremy Irons is still in my house. He's a funny bloke, isn't he? <laughs> He's a weird lad. Well, all the acting and now just all the hiding. <laughs> What's the least surprising thing that you saw? I mean, I was genuinely freaked out when I saw my own pin. I, that's the honest truth. Yeah. I'm and then the realisation it was the treachery of your actual wife. Well, at, at first I thought my wife's going to be so cross with me, and then I thought, oh, I'm supposed to be cross with her. But if I get cross with her, she will be cross with me. So <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot. She's lovely but strict. Jesus, wait till, wait till she finds out that Jeremy Irons is in the game. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Five fat points. Five fat points. <laughs> without doubt, second place, four points, Tim Vine. There's there no you doubt. go, without doubt. And these three. I would like to put these three all in joint third with three points. Let it be so, then! <laughs> the scoreboard, please, Alex. OK, the scoreboard after that task. Oh, it's tight. Three points separating all five of them. Uh, in the lead, it's Asim and Tim. Oh! oh. Yeah. Yeah. Worth saying, Asim hasn't won an episode. We're eight episodes in, so this is a chance. Let's see, what's next? A task, and this one involves an extra entity. Hello. How lovely to see you. Very nice <laughs> to see you too. I'm Tim. Well, nice to meet you. I'm Russell. I'm Carol. Carol, nice to meet you. Hello, Alice. Oh, hiya. How are you, Carol? I'm very well today, thank you. Would you like that? Yes. Do you know what's in here? No. Find out what you have in common with this person. They could have put Carol, couldn't they? You must look the person in the eye throughout the task and shake hands every time you discover something you have in common. Most remarkable things in common wins. You have a maximum of ten minutes. Your time starts now. <sighs> Carol, we have much to learn about one another. Yes, okay. we have. So, most remarkable things that they have in common. Most remarkable things. Most thing. remarkable things. For example, we both know someone who's, who's met Princess Anne. We do. Hmm. You've met Princess Anne. And I know myself. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we'll have to leave Carol there for now and take a break, I think. Return soon for the third part of Taskmaster and more Carol! <laughs> Hello! Welcome.
Welcome back to Taskmaster. It's like who wants to be a millionaire, but instead of money, the prize is your used Veruca sock. <laughs> Alex, who are we going to see first? Discovering uh, interesting things about Carol okay. and themselves. Yes, well, first up, it's the two people who are just closest to Carol's age. It's Tim and Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, what colour is your duvet? It's a dusky pink. Do you like people generally? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I yes. love them as well. Oh, have you got a double bed or a king size bed? A double bed. Right. <laughs> do you like sewing? Oh, yes. Oh, so do oh, you. Uh, do you play any sport at all? No, goodness gracious me. Any games? Um, uh, Uno. We play a lot of Uno. Oh, we got, I've got Uno. Oh, and I play Scrabble as well. Scrabble, yes. Are you good at Scrabble? Yes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm quite good at Scrabble, yeah. yeah. Have you ever drunk wine? Oh, yes. You see? Have you ever drunk vodka? No. Never? No. Not even once? No, not even once, no. Guinness? No. Well, have you got a ladder at home? Oh, yes. Yes, me too. Uh, have you got an oven? Yes, I have. So have I. Um, Are you uh, something of a connoisseur? Oh, no, whatever Sainsbury's has on offer. Well, hang on, we've all been there too, haven't we? Hats <laughs> <laughs> off to you. Did you play any sport? If you don't play sport now, did you play any sport when you were young? Well, at school I used to play tennis very badly. Ah, I played tennis quite badly. Do you find that your second serve was part of the problem? You used to constantly put both serves in the net. Both serves in the net, yes. That's a very specific thing we have in common. Yes. That was always a problem with me, that I would yes. send both serves into the net. Yes. Do you think you were an old soul? I think I may be, yes. yes I know I am. <laughs> Um, do you have a favourite colour? Purple. Purple's mine. <laughs> do you? Even though I'm wearing red, that's simply for colour. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Tim, thank it, you. Whatever happens, it was a great joy to discover that we had all those things in common. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Many... How long has purple been your favourite colour, Lisa? Uh, quite some time, actually. Mm. I pretend it's green, it isn't. Mm. <laughs> purple, is it? Yeah. Will I be able to find some pictures of you wearing purple anywhere? of pictures. <laughs> what sort of remarkable things were you hoping that Carol and Lisa would find out about themselves? Well, I thought maybe more than ladders and ovens from Tim. <laughs> well, let me put it to you, Tim. What was the most remarkable thing that you found that uh, you and Carol had in common? I think we were both in the film The Bridge Over the River Kwai. <laughs> Of course, Lisa, I'm going to have to address the fact that you were, in my opinion, clearly lying about purple being your favourite colour. <laughs> purple is my favourite colour. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Swear on your life. What's the point of that? <laughs> Good. Who's next? Next to the table, Alice and Russell. Carol, are you a human? I am a human. Same here. Carol, have you dyed your hair? Yes, I have. So have I. What do you do as your job? I'm retired now, but I used to be a teacher. What was your favourite subject to teach? I just taught home economics. Oh, cooking? Yes. I love to cook. I've written a cookbook, actually. Have you? Yeah. Do you wear glasses? Yes, I do wear glasses. Stay here, Carol. <laughs> um, when you get your eyes tested, do they put, like, cotton buds under the eyes and flip them up? No. They do with me. Well, I thought that might be the thing we have in common, but apparently no. the reason I have it done is because, direct quote, I've got fat eyelids. i noticed. So, OK. <laughs> Where do you like to go on holiday? I prefer England. So yes, do I. Yes. yes. It's closer, isn't it? It's much closer and much less hassle. I don't like fighting in airports. Do you like earwax removal videos? <laughs> I beg your pardon. What it is, there's a video where you can watch like earwax removal on the internet and it, for whatever reason is unbelievably compelling. No, I haven't yet, but it may be, yes. So look at that. Why did you stand on that? Oh, that's wonderful, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. What star sign are you? Cancer. So am I. What date is your birthday? The 11th of July. When's the 8th of July? It's near enough. I'm going to say same week. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm going to say that. What's your death row meal? Um, death row meal would be salmon, really? asparagus, yeah. and new potatoes, please. Wow, very, very light. Yes. Is your aim that hopefully that you defecate so wildly? <laughs> when you're killed, that they'll have to deal with all these problems. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, yes. asparagus and sprouts. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, yes. that's a bonanza. Yes, yes yeah. Um, so, I, that same here, Carol, because yeah. when I die, I'd like to create a mess for them to clean up. And do you have cancerian traits? 
I think I do, yes, the, the homemaker. Yeah, what else are we if we're Cantarian? What are the other kind of... All-round lovely people? Yeah. I'll, I'll shake on that. Yeah. I'll absolutely shake on that. Thank you, Alice. There we are. Thank you. Bye. All-round lovely people. Now, let's think of points here and let's think about remarkable things that you and Carol discovered about each other. Coming on to you, you lunatic. We're twins, essentially. Well, you did seem to get on genuinely very nicely. I was a bit confused because I thought that it was going to be a bit like, the connection is... I'm your mum. I thought that was going to be a thing that connected us. Oh, I see. You thought we were going to find out the surprising yeah. thing for you. Yeah. So you went for a series of pretty straightforward <laughs> questions. But we do both really um, like going on holiday in the UK. Oh, remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the fact that you were born close to... Mm. You know, that's a good example of a remarkable thing. Now... Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I have to re reward ambition and uh, to jump from polite chit-chat to do you want to see someone <laughs> hoofing earwax out of her? <laughs> and she did. And she didn't seem horrified by it. No, she loved it. We, we had a handshake afterwards. It actually made me gip, genuinely. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's awful, but I sense there was a twinkle in her eyes and I was like, I know this girl. I mean, I'm beginning to think that Carol's just a nice lady who'll agree to anything. <laughs> Finally, it's one of the most connected and personable people in the universe. Um, we're going to see her meeting Asim Chowdhury. <laughs> you are human? I am, yes. So, uh, you have teeth? I do have teeth, yes. Snap. And hair? I have hair, I have yes. Hair. Look at yes, that covered yes, yes, in yes, it. Yes, yes. Uh, you have lips. Let's just do the whole body. Yes. Lips. Yes. You have hands? Absolutely, Nails. yes. Nails? Yes. And... OK, well, I'll, the private parts are different, but we can... We have private parts, though, don't yep, we? Yes, yes. There we go. <laughs> there we go, we have something in common with that. Yeah. Um, what's your actual job? I didn't even ask you. I was a home economics teacher. I actually taught in a primary school. Is it primary school? No, no, the secondaries. Oh, yeah. We both taught. Well, I taught for a week. Oh, that's yeah, quite. Yes. I think that's quite remarkable. I think it we is. We both taught in a school. Yes. Are yes. you a dog or a cat person? Dog. Are you a dog? Yeah. Shit, I'm a cat person. <laughs> What's your favourite item of clothing? Do you, wear, do you like nice jackets, shoes? What's, what's your favourite? What shoes do you wear? Oh, I like your shoes. Well, I, I like shoes, yes. You like trainers? Yes. Oh, we yes. both have funky trainers on. But there we are. Look, I've got some funky kind of <gasps> night. Do funky it? shoes? Yeah. Yes. Have you won any awards? Not that I can think of. Um, I have. What? I've, I've won a BAFTA, an RTS award. But that was just a, I was just seeing if you won the award, then we could have matched and we yeah. both won. You must have won a award. I... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I was blown away by the quick fire. The trainers. The natural really? chap, the trainers. Funky trainers. And they were fairly incidental things, but it was very relaxed. No, I, try, I think, you know what, it's all about, like, it doesn't matter how different you are. Like, <laughs> we, were so, we were so, we were like polar opposites, Mina. Yeah. But we got on mm. and we found shit in common. And, <laughs> that's, that's what Carol was telling me earlier. Yeah. yeah. Just found some shit, shit in common. Shit in common, yeah. yeah. She hadn't won a BAFTA. She hasn't won a BAFTA. That was you the, really I just wanted some, I just wanted to slip that in, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you're going to judge this. No one's going to get one point. Oh. Because oh. I think that Carol made five lovely new friends here. Yeah, she true. just preferred some over others. <laughs> OK. And my feeling is, that um, two points, right. because there was only one remarkable thing that they shared, <laughs> is Tim and Alice. Tim and Alice will get two points each. The tennis and the birthday. The tennis and the birthday. OK, two to Alice, two and to Tim. And then Lisa will come in next, because there was a lot of physical contact <laughs> and some things in common, despite the fact she was clearly lying about purple. <laughs> two, he led the witness like mad, but he had ambition, Russell. But there was just... To me, a special bond between Asim and Carol. The will, shoes, the baffles. It will never be broken. <laughs> and therefore, I'm going to give him all five points. To hell with it. Asim Chowdhury, another five points. Another. OK, this one has a bit of everything, by which I mean children's games, shoes and art. <laughs> Hello. This your sort of thing, Russell? Yeah. Let's see what that is. Wearing these high heels, create the best dot-to-dot -dot picture on this canvas. You have ten minutes. Your time starts now. Fantastic. There are some number stickers behind you. Right. So you're leaving it ah. as just the dots and we'll complete it. I'm going to get rid of these. 
Because I feel like they might damage the thing. You familiar with Dr. Dots? Very. <laughs> OK, who's first? OK, we're going to see uh, Alice, Asim and Russell in high heels. Ready? Yes, please. Here we go. Ooh. Hurt, isn't it? They, they're actually really painful, so I've got to do this pretty quick. Oh, this is going to take a long time. Realize this might look weird if you join it all together. Aye, uh, it'll be somewhat what I wanted, but also nothing what I wanted. Do you think he could work out what it is without joining it? I think probably. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I think he'll be fine. Thank you, Adam. Cheers, Alex. Great work. See you. I'm going to start with Asim's. Yes. OK, I'll show you the dots. From the picture, you get a rough idea of what you're trying to do. This is the picture before I've joined the dots. <laughs> that is Asim's favourite emoji. Yeah. Which is, of course, the little man sticking his tongue out. Yeah, what? with a little wink. Oh. Uh, you know that one, that? Yeah. Yeah. That's my oh, favourite yeah. emoji. OK, this yeah. is the emoji. Is that big enough? Oh, come on! <laughs> I can make it bigger. I'll make it bigger. OK, make, there we go. Oh, there we go. No, that's not the exact one, because he has the wink. You think the yeah. problem is that it's not winking? That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you go back to Asim's, I will now join Asim's dots. As per the numbers. There we are. <laughs> it's a little bit Picasso kind of esque. Yeah, that, that's what Picasso did. Isn't he it? took an image and then he made it unrecognisable. <laughs> <laughs> Alice, I would say I'm not entirely sure you grasped the concept of Join the Dots. Sure. It's meant to be a mystery before you join the dots, but this is what she well, did. Well, I didn't know it was supposed to be a mystery, because you can usually see their face on a Dr. Dot, so you kind of know... No, the ones that have partially drawn in faces are for really simple children. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does, work. it does work. I can join the dots now, and it, it works. She numbered it correctly. There we go. <laughs> T... M. Yeah. I think <laughs> if you gave that Dr. Dot to a bored child in the back of the car, afterwards they would be more bored. <laughs> <laughs> OK, who's next? So this is Russell's dots. Here we go. There we are. There we are. Ooh. Now, there was a slight problem here. You know, he didn't put any numbered stickers on. Yeah. Oh. So for a child... Fairly vital. Mm, they could have gone two ways. Do you want to go for my six-year-old child or my nine-year-old child? Six, please. OK, he struggled. <laughs> OK. He did... <laughs> Like a swan. Well, well, that's, all, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> My nine-year-old did it as we presume you wanted it to be done. I guess. I mean, you said it was a picture of me. Yes. <laughs> it was that time that you almost got totally cut in half on your beekeeper's outfit, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's just get numbers out of it. Let's just make it all about the art, about the drawing, about the fun for the kids. That sort of bullshit's going to work on Carol, not on me, mate. <laughs> Um, that is the penultimate part of the show finished. One more part to go, and it's going to be really nice. See you there. <laughs>Hi there, and welcome back to Taskmaster, part four. Yes, we've been watching people making dot-to-dot -dot puzzles by perforating polystyrene with high heels, just like we all used to do when we were little children. <laughs> so far, we've had a picture of me, an emoji, and the letters T and M, so not great. Next, <laughs> <laughs> it's the turn of the grown-ups, Tim and Lisa. Mm, what are you doing? Thank you. <laughs> 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 What a ridiculous thing that we do. Right, come on. Mm, that's a bit of a splodge. Charles is coming down again. <laughs> I think you might have created something quite powerful here. Yeah, I hope so. I'll tell you what it is afterwards, don't I? Do you not think I'll be able to tell when I join the dot? No, you won't get this. <laughs> Lovely, that's me then. Thank you for your dot dot picture. Thank you so much. Goodbye. <laughs> 
Which one do you want to see first, Lisa or Tim? Um, Tim's, please. Good luck with this. This is pre-joining the dots, obviously. Okay. You can guess at this stage what mm. you think it is. You better join them. Okay. Following yeah. the numbers. Of course I'll follow fish. the numbers. Fish. It is aqua-related. I think it's a uh, sideways jellyfish swimming freely through the ocean. Viewed from above, yeah. that is the bow of the Titanic on the bed of the ocean and, and debris around it. Which... <laughs> Honestly, we've done several series of this show and I do not know what they're applauding. <laughs> what, I, I mean, I don't want to, to, to talk up my own art, but um, <laughs> one of the feelings I get from it is... <laughs> <laughs> ..is that a sense that you just, as the viewer, you just want the, the camera to pull out and see some more because this, the whole seabed... It's a beautiful memorial represented... By simple lines and numbers. There we are. Haunting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what uh, Lisa pulled out of the bag. This is pre-joining of the dots. OK. <laughs> I didn't give them all to my children. Do you want me to... Um... <laughs> do you want me to join them? I mean, do we actually need to? <laughs> Here we go. There we go. It's a hammer it's found on the Titanic. <laughs> the, the first cock and balls um, recorded is in that place that got covered with Pompeii. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So when the sailors used to get off the ship, that the phallus would actually point the way to the local hotspot for the ladies. <laughs> It's very clever, though, Lisa, because the way that you talk, because you've done some research into it, it's easy to forget that, um... <laughs> I mean, you've just drawn a cock and ball. <laughs> I'm going to show you all five of them, Greg. Yes, please. OK, then you can judge them as you see fit. There they are. Five triumphs. <clears throat> the most nonsensical, and that is saying something, I must give Asim one point, I'm afraid. OK. Uh, Alice, believe me, is so close with the most boring <laughs> dot-to-dot -dot picture of all time. Followed by the old chopped-in-half beekeeper with three points. OK. I would give... This uh, is the big moment. Well, I, I know which one I was more moved by, mm -hmm. but out of respect <laughs> for the families of the dead, <laughs> I'm going to put the cock and balls in se second place <laughs> with four points. OK, so the winner is Mr Tim Vine with five points. <laughs> Go on, then. What are the scores? Well, with one final task to go, there are just five points separating all five contenders. Oh, Shut up. up. Alice is down there on ten. <laughs> Tim has fifteen at the other end. Right. Thank Love you. it. Oh. That's it. I think this might be the one, mate. Yeah. Come on, don't say it. Right, stop sitting, start standing, and please make your way to the stage for the final task of the show. <laughs> Here they are. Good. Who's going to read the task out, Alex? Alice. Here we go. Alex. Alice. Alex. Alice. <laughs> stick a plaster to the correct body part. Alex will say the names of three body parts. You must stick a plaster to the body part that comes second in the dictionary out of the three body parts. Oh. The slowest person to stick a plaster to the correct body part is eliminated. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Alex. Body part. Body part. <laughs> so, for example, don't do it now, but if I said arm, mouth, zygote... Mouth. You'd put it on your mouth, Russell. You're quite right. <laughs> um, you're going to be judging this, Greg. Oh, here we go. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. Tongue. Neck. Nose. Oh, fucking... <laughs> And we have our first elimination. <laughs> oh, second! <laughs> Tim, you are eliminated. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Heel. Hair. Ear. <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> Heel, Heel, hair, hair and ear. ear. We have an elimination. 
Sim is eliminated. This was our Sim's chance. This yeah. Is... Two steps back. <laughs> OK. Once, once panic sets in, you can't think. <laughs> right. There's only three left, Greg. Yeah. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Biceps, sternum, spine. Push us on. Oh! Right, Craig, you have to judge who was the slowest there. Well, it was Alice. It was Alice, yeah. <laughs> we have our two finalists. We have the finalists. Well, Ross is hyperventilating. We better crack on. <laughs> OK, this is the final. Are you ready, Greg, for the yes, final? Yes, I'm ready. Here we go. Forehead. Lip. Palm. So, gentlemen, I think we have a winner. Ross and Alice! Ross and Alice just quicker. Right, we'll add those points to the total. Please, come on down. <laughs> How was that? I had high hopes for Asim. Well, yes. I've got a bad feeling. It was Asim's episode to lose, wasn't it? And he did that. <laughs> Five points uh, to Russell Howard, of course. <laughs> Series scores-wise, uh, it's fairly tight at the top. Um, Lisa is out in the lead on 157 points. Oh, what? Oh, my God. Then he goes Tim on 146 and Russell on 143. That's the top three. And there's only seven points separating Alice and Asim uh, as well. Okay. <laughs> but in this episode, the final table looks like this. Here it comes. We have a tie break. Lisa and Russell, both oh. on 70 points. Oh. This tie break is a little texty. All they had to do was receive a text message as fast as physically possible. Your time starts now. Mm -hmm. Like my cousin Lewis. Mm -hmm. Bit too long, isn't it? Are you still writing your text? Yeah. OK. My girlfriend is a doctor, and you're not allowed to call her at work. And I haven't really got any other friends. <laughs> um, everyone's busy. Oh, he'll be lollygagging around. Hang on. Fuck, this is bad, eh? I'll just send another one out, okay. in case somebody else wants to text me. <laughs> Hello? There you go. It's from my mum. Oh. Text. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Lisa took 57 seconds to send a text. <laughs> well, you want to put a bit of background in it, don't you? <laughs> Russell received a text from his mum in 3 minutes and 51 seconds. Right. That is slow, eh? Lisa? Lisa received a text in three minutes, <gasps> 50, <gasps> three. <gasps> Russell wins! Wow. wow. Well, congratulations. Thank you, my daddy. Russell is going to play your fancy footwear. <laughs> so, what have we learned today? We've learned that for poor old Asim Chowdhury, our mouth zygote is a load of utter big toe bobble hat. <laughs> And tonight's wonderful winner is Mr. Russell Howard. Slap your hands, silly, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye! <laughs>